say we raise the sound. We raise the sound. We raise. We raise the sound. We raise the sound. We raise the sound. We raise. We raise the sound. Somebody just lift up your hands to the Lord this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God wants to hear your voice this morning. Let it come from your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Let the church sing. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord of Lords. Go ahead and bless your Father. Give Him all the praise. Give Him all the glory. Let the temple not go down. Can you increase it in worship? Can you increase your temple of worship this morning? Can you raise your voice this morning to worship your Father? Can you let the Lord hear you worship Him? Let it flow from your heart. Let it come through your mouth. Exalt the name of Jesus. Exalt the name of the Lord. Magnify him this morning. Praise him this morning. Bless him this morning. Give him the fruit of your lips. Let your words mean something to God this morning. Let the Lord be blessed with the words of your mouth. The content of your heart. Let him bless your father this morning. Just go ahead and bless him. Give him the praise. He deserves your worship. Nobody else can take it. It does not belong to anybody else. Give the worship to your father this morning. Exalt him. Magnify him. The most wise God.
the name all sickness is bound demons tremble at the sound of the name it is not an ordinary name it's a name full of power and grace Jesus, don't speculate, just worship. Jesus, even if you don't know the song, continue with us in your spirit. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
so full we don't even know what to ask for just call the name of Jesus or oh, sometimes you we are overwhelmed by the worries and the cares of this world just call the name Jesus sometimes you don't know the solution you have prayed you have fasted you have looked onto the face of the Lord you have waited you have cried in your closet you have cried in front of men you have done all that you need to do you have tried the very best just call the name of Jesus before we pray and take our seats there's a song that I want us to sing together they're going to share the lyrics of the song and they will also play the song for us because I want you to really not sing the song this morning and as you're singing the song you're praying in your heart the title of the song is Call on Me. It's by Nathaniel Bassey, in case you want to. The song ministered to me all through the week. I went to work every day of this last week. Listen, not every day, almost every day. Listening to the song. I was just repeating the song. And many things God said told in my heart. I want us to... Listen to the song. If you know the song, sing along with the, with the um the um the recording, and you will see God do something in your life. In Jesus' name, Med multimedia, please help us. Let's go. I want you to look at the lyrics. Look, read the lyrics, understand the lyrics. Don't just sing it. I want you to understand the lyrics.
That you're clapping. Did you learn anything from the song? Call and it will answer. There's blessing in the name of Jesus. Angels are standing by, waiting for your call. Heavens are waiting for your cry. Heavens are waiting for you to ask. Heavens are waiting for you to ask. I dare you to ask this morning. I want you to please go ahead and ask. The song says that angels are waiting. Waiting to hear you pray. They are waiting to hear you ask. They are waiting to hear your petition. They are waiting. God has dispatched them already. All they are looking for is your call. They are waiting for you to call. It's just that when you hold your phone, if nobody calls from the other side, you won't pick it up. He is waiting for you to ask this morning. Ask in the name of Jesus and you shall receive in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father Lord, we just want to say a very big thank you. Thank you for your promises over and over and over and over again. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are kind. Thank you because you are merciful. Thank you for all that we have enjoyed. Thank you for the 31 days of this month. Thank you. Glorious month he has been. We are grateful in this house. We are grateful in our individual families and lives. We are grateful for all that you have done. We thank you for ending this even in your presence thank you mighty father we exalt your name forevermore as we go into the word holy spirit please bring your word by yourself speak your word to us let your word let it come to us let us receive it and let your word germinate in our heart in the name of jesus christ bring the nugget of your word let it come with simplicity let it be explained to us let not he let us not hear the word the, the the letter but let your spirit bring understanding out of the letter in the name of our lord jesus christ bless both the speaker and the hearer and let all the glory be unto you for we have prayed in jesus mighty name amen, amen. praise the lord Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. We, um, we want to thank God for the very last day in this seventh month of um, year 2022. We thank God for his faithfulness, for his loving kindness. Um, if you look around, you will see that many of our people have traveled. Usually summer is like this. A lot of people travel. You know, everybody go somewhere. Some are in Nigeria, some are in Jamaica, some are in Amshir somewhere. Some, <laughs> some are all over the place. But we know that the Lord will keep them all and bring them all safely. In Jesus' name, as many of you that are watching, um, that you have traveled, please don't over enjoy. <laughs> enjoy in moderation. And um, the Lord will be with you and bring you back safely in Jesus' name. And our many, many online viewers, many Desire of Nations family all around the globe, the Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in. The Lord give you the reward in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. 
Um, so today we are going to be talking about something that the Holy Spirit has titled, Who's Name? In Who's Name? In Who's Name? In Who's Name? And what is a name? A name is a word by which a person is known, a person is identified, a person is referred to. A name is your identity. Your name is who you are. That's what a name is. And we know that names are very important because our names is what we are. Like we said, our names are our identity. That's what we carry. Our names are the connection to our lives. Our name speaks in our lives. And we have several examples of those people that their names spoke for them. You know, we know the case of Jabez. He went around carrying sorrow when he was not supposed to be in sorrow. His name was speaking in his life. And also, we have God, thank God for, for um, Benjamin's life. Benjamin would have been called Benoni if not for the intervention of God. Names are very, 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 very important in all of our lives. Can we please sit down? Thank you. And you know that I'm easily distracted. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So names are very important in all of our lives. You know, when somebody call Odunwayo, nobody here answers except for Sister Odu. Because that's her name. If somebody say, hey, every single person will turn because A is not a name. If I hear the word Olubu, I know it's my dad. Because it's my dad that calls me that. So if I hear that word, I will automatically say, ah, this is my father. Because that's what my dad called, called me growing up. Although that has changed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I am now somebody's wife, somebody's mother. So that has changed long, long time ago. But yes, so when you hear words like that, some people, maybe it's their pet name. When they call you, you listen, you hear, and you go, oh, wow. Because that's what you're used to. That's your name. That's your identity. That's what you are called by this person. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Hallelujah. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth us, and we forbade him, because he followeth us not. Can we get there? Jesus asked his disciples a very important question. And that question is found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. He says, you know, the people of the world, some says that you are Elijah. Some says that you are one of the prophets. Some says you are this. Some say that you are that. He now asked them the question. Matthew 16, verse 15. Who do you say that I am? We have heard what everybody else had called me. I hear them. Then he asks them, but what do I, do you say I am? 
Who do you say I am? Verse 16. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then the, in the next chapter, um, verse, verse 17, then Jesus said to him, this cannot be known by human knowledge. This can only be revealed by the spirit of God. King James Version said, this, this is not, is not flesh and blood that has revealed this to you. This could have only been revealed by God, by the spirit of God, by the spirit of God, by the spirit of God. He carried a name, Jesus. Savior, the Messiah, the healer, the comforter, many, many, many names. And he asked the, the, the disciples, what are these people saying about me? And they began to tell him, oh, they said you are the Messiah. You, they said you are one, one of them. They said you are probably John the Baptist that came back. You are Elijah. You are this one. You are that one. Then he asked them, who do you think I am? Who do you, to you, who, I, who am I? Who do you say that I am? And he answered and said, you are the Messiah. The son of the living God. That couldn't have come. By the knowledge of men, it could have only been revealed by the Spirit of God. And that is who Jesus is. That is who Jesus is. That is who Jesus is. Acts chapter 19, verse 13. Acts chapter 19. We are going somewhere. Just Let's just be building it up. Acts chapter 19, verse 13. I'm going to read to verse 16. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, no, can we do an LT, please? A group of Jews were traveling from town to town, casting, casting out evil spirit. They tried to use the name, they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation. They tried to use the name of Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. Fifteen. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the men with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. They came with their incantation and saying, come out of this person in the name of Jesus that Paul talked about. In the name of that Jesus. The difference between the seven sons of Sceva and that person that the apostles saw casting out demons in Mark chapter 9 and, and Mark um, chapter 16 verse um, 16 to 18 is because that person believed. The difference between the sons, seven sons of Sceva saying we don't believe in Jesus. We are doing our thing but there is somebody that they said by his name, we have seen them cast out demons and people have been healed by that name. We will just use that name in our own way to find solution. For if you read the, 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 I think the 13th um, chapter um, verse that we read earlier, it was working for them. Then he said, one particular evil spirit said, uh -uh. it is not by what you say, it is by what you believe. So, many people are not receiving because they do not believe. I know every single one of us this morning called the name of Jesus. But do you believe? Do you believe the name of Jesus? Are you calling the name of Jesus because your mother called the name of Jesus? Are you calling the name of Jesus because you have heard somebody call the name of Jesus? Are you praying?
praying to God because you believe that your totality is in him. Or you are praying because you have heard your neighbor prayed about to Jesus. Are you coming to church because your parents have told you to do so? Well, that's all you did growing up. Or are you coming to church, being in the presence of God because you believe? The sons of Sceva, it was happening for them. And for some of us, it happened for us. You prayed in the name of Jesus two months ago and things happened. But a particular time came, just like the sons of Sceva, they prayed in that same name and they didn't answer. And the demon was like, hey, shush, shush, shush your mouth. I know Jesus. I know Paul. Excuse me, who are you? The mountains look like it's not going to ever go away because you do not believe. Why are you praying? Why are you calling Jesus? Why are you in the presence of God? Why do you pray? Why do you wait? Why do you fast? Why do you do any of these things? I was talking to a sister friend of mine yesterday and she was talking to me how in the church of God this particular place she said she knew some of these women that are <laughs> people that serve in the church that, do, that goes to native doctors and do voodoo and mix Jesus with something else just like the sons of Sceva Sunday morning, they will be in church. Sunday evening, they will be calling this Baba somewhere. Wednesday service, they will be in church. Thursday morning, they will be asking, please help me send it. I need to mix it. I need to use it. Everything is jamming each other inside of you. Somebody said, they will go to this, I don't want to mention the nomination. They'll go to this church, carry water. Go to this church, carry oil. Go to this one, mountain of something. Go and do deliverance. They will go everywhere, up in from places to places, looking for solution. Why are you doing the things that you're doing? Many of us are like the sons of Skiva. We probably don't, I, do, I don't want to believe that anyone here, because when the person was saying it, I scanned through the Zion Nations immediately. <laughs> I'm telling you. I scanned through, I'm like, uh-uh. Alone, yeah, yeah, shatani, go see. Pardon my vocabulary. Take, nobody like that can ever be in the Zion Nations. Amen. When you will come here, we will pray. And you will in the evening go and call somebody somewhere to be sending you something from somewhere. The thing will catch fire and will not work. Amen. It can never work. You cannot serve God and mammon. In this sense, it's not God of money that I'm talking about. You cannot serve God and another strange God somewhere else. You cannot bow your head to God after serving God this morning, worshiping him in songs, and then you will go and be now saying, well, well, just in case God does not work, let me try plan B. Some people say, ah, God rock sometimes is very slow. Like the sons of Sceva, it was working for them before. Because it has worked for them before, they kept doing it. Mixing the name of Jesus with their incantation. If you have it, it will cease to work. Amen. It will cease to work. I was telling the sister friend of mine yesterday. I said every single time somebody called me and said, there's an issue. I said to them, ah, Tom, the only thing we know how to do is to fast and to pray. I don't pray inside water for you to drink. I don't do nothing. You believe it will work. If it doesn't work, mm -hmm, I'm not God. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not the one that would do it. All I can do is to pray. And that's what God says to do. If it doesn't work, I don't know what else to do. You cannot push me to tell you anything else. And it has 
walked many times. Over and over and over and over again. All God said to me to do is to pray. He said, Bumi, all you need to do is to ask. And I have seen it work. Many people, like the sons of Skiva, they are mixing many things to God. Oh, some people's own is not incantation. Some people is dabbling with sin. Because you did it last month, it did not backfire. You did it six months ago, it did not backfire. You did it seven years ago, nothing happened. You continue to mix it with God. The day it will stop working, you will be so shocked. You'll be so shocked. How can you call yourself a child of God? Minister of the gospel. In this church, we know that the Zion of Nations, New York City, is different from every other church. I can use the whole mouth to say it because every one of us here, we are ministers. Everybody stand on the pulpit of God and preach the word of God. And we all listen. And we are all blessed. All the time. If you are not doing this because you don't want to do. Everybody is growing at the same time. We are growing. Although we are all not on, definitely not on the same level. But we are all growing. The platform to grow is here. You know some churches is the pastor that will do morning service, second service, prayer service. They will do the digging deep, do the opening prayer. Every single thing. It does not happen like that in the Zion of Nations. We are all going to grow. And do you know, there have been several things that I hear from all of, because you, you should also understand that the Zion of Nations, we have a lot of people come in and go because students are here. They come, they're in school, max four years, after four years, we pray, they pray here, they start teaching Sunday school. Somebody told me the other day, parents, I met, I, I, when we went to camp in June, um, June she said, ah, my son went from this level spiritually to this level, being in the desire of nations. Because when you are here, you would, you would have to take Sunday school. Everybody grows. God uses all of us. So if you are a minister of the word of God, you will do, you will teach us here treasures from heaven on a Sunday morning. And you will leave treasures from heaven. You will go into the week and you will be jumping from one bed to another and be going from one man to another. Even if you are not going from one man to another, you are not married and you are having what you are not supposed to have. The day is coming when like the sons of Skiva, this is not a curse. Sometimes when God brings his word, he slaps you right, left, and center. You just have to take it. A day is coming when like the sons of Skiva, it will not happen. It will not gel. It will not work. It will scatter. And, the, and it will look like there is a show of shame. The day is coming. This is the word of God to all of us. It's the word of God to all of us. Just the same way God will embrace us and, and carry us and shield us and cocoon us. So also he chastises us. Like the sons of Skiva. A day is coming that that thing will not gel. That that thing will not work. And it will become a public show of shame. <laughs> Do you remember what happened to the sons of Skiva? They were beaten. They ran out naked. 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 I pray that will not be any of our lords in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 21 verse 22. I believe that is a warning for all of us. Everybody. Pick your own. It is not to another person. 
It is to you. It is to you. Praise the Lord. Because somebody might be sitting and saying, I, I wish this person was here today. Eh, 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 eh. Mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. Matthew chapter 21 verse 22 says, the NIV, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayers. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayers. We were talking about the difference between that single man that they saw that was healing and the sons of Sceva. And Mark chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, that says, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, it says you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer if you believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? You will receive in Jesus' name. If you are, if you're asking in the name of of Jesus and you have not received what you're asking for if you're asking in the name of Jesus and you have not received what you have asked for it could be one of these things that we're about to quickly talk about if you're asking and you have not yet received one of it is unbelief we have said it's I think we have flogged that enough. Unbelief. If you do not believe, you cannot receive. If you do not believe, you cannot receive. Someone will say, I believe. I receive. Once they said it, I believe it. But it, how come I'm not seeing it? They told me to believe, pray and believe and receive. I have prayed. I believe. How come I'm not receiving it? If you pray, for example, for healing, say, God, heal me completely. I don't want this pain anymore. Take it away. In Jesus' name, I receive. And you get up from your knee, sat down, a call come through your phone, and you pick up the phone, and the person says, oh, so how about your body pain how about that sickness how about and then you go oh my god let me tell you oh that's how oh that's this oh my god the pain i couldn't sleep at night the headache the shoulder pain the leg pain da, 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 da. it just it's just as if a farmer put the seed in the ground cover it up and went back there dig the seed out and that's it the bible says when you pray, believe. Calling those things that are not as though they were. Yesterday, I was talking to my children. You know, I went to a woman's, um, women's um, event. It was, a, it was a powerful, 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 powerful event. I please ask and beg all of you, when we see things like that, they, do, they are not every day. It's once in a while. It was like a deliverance service. Powerful service yesterday. Powerful service. You know, and the lady was, you know, talking about, of course, it was sev several um, segments of many different things. They talk about health as well. And they talked about, you know, um, diabetes and high blood pressure. And the lady, when she was done with her presentation, she said, I wish parents speak to their children, explain to their children any of these diseases that are in their family. Number one, um, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Thing that actually make people go through any of these diseases is the gene. So if, if, you already, if it's already in the gene, if a family member has it, a father, a mother, a grandfather, whatever, is something that you need to begin to educate your children. Talk to them about it so that they know to make right choices. So that they are not eating things that can put them in that predicament. 
so that they begin to understand. And I said to them, my parents did not tell me any of this. I was already writing it down. Say, ah, well, as soon as I get home, I'm going to discuss this with my children. Then the lady rounded it up to say, parent, please talk to your children about it. As little as four-year-old. Don't take too much of this. You might think they're not listening. Let them know. Give them examples. Give them examples. Let them know. And I was, as I was talking to them, I had to tell them, I said, you know, it's not a lack of um, proper English construction, you know. I will use ad as if it does not exist or it was there, but it's no more. So whenever I say your great grandfather, I say had, of course they were dead anyway. But if I had to refer to somebody that is living and still have that condition, I use had. Calling those things that are as if they do not exist. Though you see it, though you see that these people are still using medication for it, though you see that there's evidence that it's still there, but calling those things as, as if it does not exist, that's what belief is. That's what having faith is. That's what it is. We need to begin to speak the things that we want to see. If you are asking in his name and you're not receiving, James chapter 4 verse 3 says the motives might be wrong. If you're asking in the name of Jesus and you're not receiving, the motives might be wrong. Is it that the AC is too cold? That's why people are sleeping. The motives might be wrong. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. The motives might be wrong. Mark chapter 8 verse 23 to 25 says, you do not persist. When you're asking and you do not persist in prayer. You do not persist in prayer. This is the story of the blind man. That they ask, they beg Jesus, please heal this man. When Jesus told him, oh come. And he spat on the, the man's eye. Said, what do you see? He said, ah, I see, but I see men walking like trees. Do you see men walking like trees? No, that's not a good sight. And Jesus had to do it the second time. So many of us, once we see men walking like trees, we begin to, maybe God does not want to do it. Maybe he's not, the, maybe he's, maybe this is the best. Or oh, maybe this is what will God do. We do not persist. We do not tarry in the place of prayer. We do not continue to pray. We do not persist in the place of prayer. We ask and we forget about it. The thing is, we want, quick, give it to me now. We do not persist in the place of prayer. We do not persist in the place of prayer. Another reason why sometimes we ask in his name and we do not receive, because the time is not right. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, we all know. There's a season and there is time for everything. Because you have asked God and you're yet to receive doesn't mean he's not going to do it. Somebody said, God answers three ways. Yes, no, or never. But I say, God answers in four ways. Yes, no, not time, or never. Yes, no, not time, or never. Because you ask and you have not received yet, does not mean God did not answer you. Maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe the time is not right. Maybe the time is not right. Because we know that his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways, not our ways. And God is good. 
He is always good and will always be good. Another reason why we might ask and not receive could be that God has answered, but we are looking at something else. The answer of the Lord is not what we were expecting. So it looks or feels to us that God has not answered. I asked for a child. I was specific. I wanted a, male, a female child first. And God gave me a male child first. And the Lord gave me the best ever. Sometimes we ask. And God answers. But we look elsewhere. Because that is not what we were expecting. Every single problem have a solution. Every problem ever. But so many times we are looking at the wrong place. And I want to thank the spirit of God for this morning's treasures from heaven. As I was sitting there and they were talking about looking at the foundation, looking at the, the core, the, the genesis of the problem and not cutting just the tree, but dealing with the root of the problem. I said, this is the spirit of God confirming this is what God is doing. So many times, we might be looking for job. And God is saying, it is not the job. Fix the resume. You have been submitting this resume. And to you, the problem is, why are they not calling me? I'm qualified. A lot of people have filled out the application. Less qualified. Have less qualification. Why are they not hiring me? Maybe you need to fix the resume. Maybe the problem is not you applying. Maybe the first problem is to fix the resume. Every single problem has a solution. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to see the solution. This morning I was driving to the restaurant and the Holy Spirit um, dropped this... Um, testimony it's a testimony it, can, it will always be a testimony and I think on Sunday is it Sunday or Monday during one of our prayers when I was rounding up I I I, I shared it but I, I I didn't share it all because of our time I was rushing and the Holy Spirit brought the, the that same thing to me this morning to share with us 2006 my sister and I we left our mother's house and we moved out of the house. We rented a, um, a two-bedroom apartment somewhere in Brooklyn. And we walked into the house. My sister had, you know what the Nigerian people will call tiaroba? When you go to, <laughs> to a dealership and you are the first owner of the car, the first to rip the, the, the plastic wrap off a car. That was what my sister had. I had a Grand Cherokee. And we moved to this house with this. I was working, you know, we were doing very well. Both of our husbands at that time were in UK. And everything was going smooth. So most of the time, three months, I would work. So I, I didn't get a, um, a regular job. I was doing a per diem. So I would work whenever I'm available. I was going to school because I wanted to be able to, to travel to see my husband. So I would just do three months in, and I was also in school. Any small little break, <laughs> I travel out. So I was working and doing this. You know, life was good. I think about two or three months into moving into the apartment, my job that I was their best staff, the house that I was working for, because I was working at the assistant, assistant living. So the house, the house that I was working for, the manager always requested me. So when you call the, um, the schedule manager, say, please, I want cooker here. That was my, that's my, uh, my maiden name. I want cooker here. I want cooker here. So they will call me all the time. Every time I called the schedule manager, there was no schedule. That was the beginning of the problem. My sister lost her job. Ha. The, we couldn't pay rent. We couldn't pay our car note. They were calling, calling, calling. 
After a while, they said they were coming to come and repossess the car. How can they repossess both of our cars at the same time? It was the same day they came to come and collect the cars. I heard the noise. I opened the window and I saw them driving off this car. Hi, I wept. Everything went like this. Every Sunday, my house, all of my siblings and some of our very close, you know, friends will come and I will cook. Everybody come with their lunch boxes. So they will pack for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday through Friday. I was not able to cook for anybody. That was how bad it was. The landlord said, don't worry, don't pay rent. When we moved into this car, into this house, I always pitied them. Like, how can these people be living like this? They, of course, let me make it straight to us. They are not Nigerians. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to mention where they are from. Of course, they're not Nigerians. They're not even from Africa. And I will say, how did they borrow to buy this house? And now they are like living like this. The moment they came to repossess our cars, the following week, they bought a big escalade. You know those ones that you have to climb to enter? You, there's two steps. One, two, then you jump inside. They bought a big escalade. I looked and said, ah, ah, these people have arrived. Don't worry, don't pay rent. I was fasting and praying, God, what, what, what are you saying about this matter? What is going on in this place? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? I was applying everywhere. I wanted a school regular schedule now. I was looking for a job. It was, not my it was not my resume. It was also not because I was not qualified. There was an underlying issue. Until that issue was removed, job did not see me. The manager of the house that I was always working at called me and said, what is going on? They told me you're not available. I said, ah, I have been available. <laughs> She said, I'm going to call the schedule manager. Call the schedule manager. She never called me back. I was calling. She was ignoring my calls. I said, this is a problem. Began to pray and pray and fasted. Fasted for my life. There was no food anyway. So fast was no power. Then one day, on a Sunday like this, we came to church. We finished service. I went home. And I laid on my bed. I said, God, I'm really tired of this mountain. I am tired of this mountain. And I slept and I saw an old man come to me in my dream and said, leave this house now. And that was all the old man said. I jumped up from my sleep. I left my room and I went, because I knew there was a problem. I just didn't know what was the solution. I didn't know where the problem was coming from. I knocked on my sister's door and I said, well, today we are leaving. She said, ha, ah, ah, where are you going? They are not even bothering us. They say we should not pay rent. We want to now move back home. It's not good to move from where you have moved back from. I said, sit down. Me, I'm gone. You can be here. Don't be paying rent. Let them be using your glory to be doing their own life. Me, I'm gone. The person that has glory is the one that they will use it. They don't have. Sit down. Let them finish what glory God has given you. I just got up. Picked the little things that I could pick. I was sleeping on the floor in my mother's house for months. But the week that I got to that place, this schedule manager that I said me, I'm not available, suddenly called me. He said, Coca, are you available? I said, ah, ah, you have my number. That was how I started working again. That was how things turned around. By the way, my sister followed. <laughs> Because she knew when I said it one time, that's it. You want to believe, believe. You don't want to believe, <laughs> stay here. She followed. We slept on the floor for months, trying to gather money to start all over again. Until that problem was solved, she was applying, I was applying, nothing came through. By the time we moved back to my parents' house, I think it was the month of... I don't, I don't remember, maybe March. And my husband came in the month of August of that year, 2028. I had a car when he came. I did not finance this time because they would not answer me. <laughs> but I had a car when he came. 
until the problem was taken care of. So if you have been applying, if you have been praying, if you have been looking, if you have been going around praying and it looks like it's not happening, look at the root. How can you tell the root? It is not praying for two minutes. You have to tarry in the place of prayer. The Holy Spirit will tell you if you have no other choice. You are not planning anything else. You are not asking God, um, somebody to take you to some man that can pray for you. You are not saying, please help me, take, take me to the person. Because you see, some of these people, you say you went to go and pray. By the time they are done with you, you will be seeing yourself at night doing meeting in a coven. This is another testimony somebody told me. They went to a pastor, not Baba Abalist, not traditional person. They went to a pastor because they wanted to be in America. They came to America every night. They started seeing themselves in coven. Have you meeting in Nigeria? You have to go on your knees and pray to your God by yourself. You are the only one that knows the God that you serve. Don't let anybody deceive you. The Bible already warned us that in the last day, many will come to you in my name. Flee from these people. Don't be lazy to pray. Don't be a two-minute noodles prayer person. You need to tarry in the place of prayer. If you read the open heavens, I think it was on Friday, Daddy Gio said, many of the things that he saw, that he's seeing today, enjoying today, if he had stopped praying, he would not have received them. You have to persist in the place of prayer. Don't be lazy. Your life is in your hand. Don't toy with it. Don't give it to another person. Don't let somebody use you to be doing snook up and balls and kicking you all over the table. It is time for you to get up and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. And you see things begin to happen in your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. His name is above every other. The song we sang earlier said, angels are waiting. For you. How many times? Ha, a woman of God was saying yesterday. And when I got to church this morning. I said to Kines Buki. Please we have to go on in prayer mountain. She said. She's a pastor's wife. A pastor in ALCC in Brooklyn. She was the guest minister yesterday. Powerful woman of God. And she said. Everybody in her family. In her household. Her husband, the pastor, her children and all those spiritual children that God has given to her, they were prospering. Everybody was doing good but her. She said, at first it wasn't nothing. Then she called herself and said, what is wrong with me? Why is it that everybody is prospering and doing well, but it looks like she's stagnant? She said, this is the same person they call a prophetess. The one that speaks and God will answer. But she's battling with problems. That she did not know she had. She's the same one. That people will come. She will lay hands on them. They will be healed. But her own life was on a halt. She was on a standstill. She said this is the same her. That she will speak in tongues two hours straight. But she had a problem. Oh, that did not take out that stagnation problem. She said she just went on a prayer mountain. She prayed for five hours. How many of us here have ever prayed for five hours? Ha. And you want things to begin to shake. She said she prayed five hours. She said from that moment, it's like, you know, um, what's that, a parachute? Up, 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 and keep going up and up and up and higher and higher. If you dare to pray and not wait and not say it will happen. But remember, praying without looking at the root, root cause will be, in the word of my dear brother here this morning, he said it will be like um, 
some, I don't know, the military term, shooting a random. He said, but when you have a target, that's how you said it, Pastor Pius. When you have a target, you aim at the target. You shoot at it and you conquer it. But when you are shooting randomly, you might shoot very close to it, but never hit it. You need to go and check the root cause. You need to understand what the problem is. Some of them, like I said, they might not be spiritual. They might just be your own ways of life. It can just be you. Not having, husband is not coming. Nobody is asking me, change the way you look. Change your face. Change how you do. Smile more. Be hospitable. Be nice. Smell good. Some of these things are not because you need prayer. Look inward. Check what you're doing. You are not the only one. Check within. Then you begin to see where the problem is by the help of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to make um, to do make solution. Imagine if God had not told us to leave that house. We didn't have to do anything. All we needed to do was to pack out of that house. If we had prayed, tarried the very first night we got there, or maybe if we have prayed before we even moved in, we would never have moved into that house. Every single time. After that, we rented one more apartment. Before I would pray. My pastor, Edger, please come. We want to rent a house here. Oh yeah. Began to pray. When we bought our house, before we even signed the moment I went there and I said, this one we like. And we are already in the process of negotiation. I went there by myself alone. I did a prayer walk, did a prayer walk, did a prayer walk, did a prayer walk. Then I went there. My mother-in-law, my husband, and my boys. We went there, did another prayer walk, did another. Before we signed, I have seen things happen in this America. And you will never let it happen to me again. We did a prayer walk. I went there, I walk on everybody. And as I was walking, I saw one people wearing one long red something. I said, ah, ah, in this America, this one looked like Guru Maharaj people. Who are this one? And I began to pray. Ah, you will move. God will move you from this area. Power of God will shake you from the foundation and move you. I don't, I've never seen them after that. They have a temple that has been abandoned. You have to take control of your life. If you don't, ha, <laughs> the devil will use you like a remote, be remotely controlling you. God forbid. If you allow it to happen to you. Take hold of it. Don't allow the devil. This is not the time whenever we say pray. You'll be sitting down. I hope on Monday when you dial in, you are not just putting your phone on mute and just going around doing everything. I hope you are praying. I hope that's what you're doing. I hope it's not that all you do is you just enjoy life. People that enjoy life, they don't do more than enjoying life. Nothing happens. Because you are making 60,000, you think that's the, the honey sugar hasty. Ha. If God will open your eyes to see where you're supposed to be, you will understand that you need to buckle up. Things can only happen when you pray. You deal with it in the spiritual realm and you begin to see it manifest in the physical. If you are lazy in the physical, your spiritual realm, nothing is happening there. The devil, demons and assignment, they are taking breaks. You know why? Because you are not praying. They are like, let's go and join force with another one. Look at this one, it's not even, there's no th threat. It's okay. Take hold of it. Fight the good fight of faith. And you will see things turn around for you in Jesus' name. I want to encourage us to please rise. I want you to pray. I want you to please pray. And you are praying for yourself. I want you, if there is a particular thing that you are, have been asking God... Or you have, you don't even, you have not asked God yet. But you know there is a problem. 
and you don't know where the solution will come from. You don't even know how to attend to it. You don't know what to do with it. I want you to please ask God to show you. Ask God to show you the solution. Ask him to speak to you. If you have been dreaming before and all of a sudden you don't dream anymore, it's because you're sleeping spiritually. If you used to hear from God, if God used to, you, you, you would get a voice, a still small voice, or God would just instill something in your heart, but it looks like you're not getting those things anymore. It's because you are sleeping spiritually. Your prayer altar is freezing, not cold. It's, it has ice on it. The devil, you know, lizards, snakes are just running all over it because there is no fire. I want you to ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God that burns in people's bone, that makes them to, to, to tarry in the place of prayer. Or if what you have done is you have, you have toiled with, with, with the gift of God in you. You have, you have, you have, you have messed up bigly. They ask God for, for, for a change of heart and that the Lord will have mercy upon you so that you will not suffer shame. So that you will not suffer shame. Ask the Spirit of God to help you and ask that the Lord will open your eyes to see the solution to the problem. Problem, so that you can take the axe to the root. And as you lay the axe in the root, at the root, the Lord will uproot it. And the Lord will give you a permanent solution because we have asked in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us just stretch out our hands to our pastor and pray for her. Let us pray that indeed when she opens her mouth and she asks of the Lord, oh, that the Lord will hear and answer her in the mighty name of Jesus. That anything in her life, anything around her that might prevent her voice from being heard, that might want to silence her voice and prevent her from even asking those things that you have prepared for her and her family. We ask, oh Lord God, that you remove such barriers in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, when she calls upon you, oh, not only will you hear her, you will answer her, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. When her family calls on you, oh Lord, you will hear and you will answer them in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord God, that 